and a political thief. Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry. Isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Because we choose them. We vote them. We blindly say we are not blind. Who is deceiving who? The ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief. Is it not? But we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our job, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. What a travesty. It calls for us to think and think deep. The stage we are in as a country is not a stage where you become an onlooker. You have become an onlooker for too long. You must get ready to put your hands to the plow and be part of the process. It's not just about PVC, carry PVC. You must be in the kitchen where it is being determined. You must be there where the decisions have been made. If we are there in our numbers, they cannot outnumber us. But you leave it aloof. Oh, you know, it's too dirty. It's a dirty game. And then the dirty guys get into the game of play and you are there not showing up. And when they begin to make the decisions, you will know whether it's a dirty game or not. The result is always dirty on us. Dirty on your health. Dirty on your business. Dirty on your success and your career. I hope that is tearing up something in you. What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry. Isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Because we choose them. We vote them. We blindly say we are not blind. Who is deceiving who? The ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief. Is it not? But we fight each other to defend and protect the political thief. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our joy, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. What a travesty. It calls for us to think and think deep. The stage we are in as a country is not a stage where you become an onlooker. You have become an onlooker for too long must get ready to put your hands to the plow and be part of the process. It's not just about PVC, carry PVC. You must be in the kitchen where it is being determined. You must be there where the decisions have been made. If we are there in our numbers, they cannot outnumber us. But you leave it aloof. Oh, you know, it's too... <laughs> pressure, 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 boss, pipe. Pressure bus, bye, bye, bye.
Umaninza, Umaninza, Guyana de Andawata. Underrang. Sorry. Umaninza, Umaninza, Guyana de Anda Pressure. Walk. Banga Mary's full horn all upon. Trout full horn all upon. Oh, you go buy double sell back by. I just come and tell the boy, I'm buy me little fish and mix with me little crab and sell. Thing that just raise, thing just double the price, just double oh. But no, what you could do now? You don't squeeze out the juice for the guy and these people. The beer hawks left, what you gonna do with the orange? I we can eat the fucking hawks that guy. Pressure boss pipe, partner. Pressure boss pipe. When you put up a fucking 20,000 this week, next week you put up a 10,000, and week you put up a fucking 15,000. End of the month, you gotta still buy around 20,000, man. Somebody will pay the bill. Right now, like what a bill more dear of like bill. And then I'll, if you get caught off, me a walk little crab. Me a crab, man, is walk little crab. That's it. Me got me a do business. You gotta pay commercial. But seven five, you gotta pay fifteen thousand. But just put a man. No nonsense, man. Me the people try rob your back your back them a rob you got your face. Now look the goods gone. What the f*** am going to hear, buddy? Light bill, phone bill, NIS, tax. Ration. Look the thing that raised two dollars more. Everything is just double all the time. People got dead of Hello, This is attorney Shellen Washington, owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, the phone number to call us is 718-877-3100. If you are looking to have your statutory declaration, affidavit of income, identity, damage or loss, passport, loss license, tenancy agreement, agreement of settlement, power of attorney, last will and testament, and certification of documents, then you need to visit the Alistair Collins Firm, located at the Kellyan Mall, 162 Lamaha Street in Georgetown, between Camp and Waterloo Street. Alistair Collins is a commissioner of oaths and a justice of the peace. Make certain you visit him or call for more information at 649-6410 or 685-6448 or 503-14. Five one, and there's adequate parking available. Go down to the Alistair Collins firm and have all of your legal issues settled and brought to the fore. Alistair Collins firm. Contact them at Alistair Collins firm. All right. Hey, good evening. Uh, I, I just want to I want to start off with this and for a particular reason, and then we'll go straight into Guyana. Uh, you remember Sha Carey, right? Uh, Richardson, lots of uh, talks, which is good in uh, any competition. Uh, she didn't live up to expectations, but uh, she was actually banned from the Olympics or suspended for a month, 30 days or something like that, all because they detected uh, marijuana in her system. Now look what's happening here now. With this Caucasian girl, 15 years old, banned substance found, uh, illegal substance, of course, and uh, the treatment was quite different. She was allowed to participate 
albeit she wouldn't be getting any medals and whatever, whatever, but she was allowed to participate. Just uh, pointing out some uh, obvious forms of discrimination. And now let's head to Guyana, right? Look what's happening. This was yesterday, but they continue today with the protest. I know our technical guy, one of them, um, Lemon, was actually monitoring the situation and kept bothering me like all day whether I'm tuned into the protests. And, and I'm like, look, there are people who are covering it. Lemon, just let me do some other stuff. Nevertheless, Lemon is all upbeat and ready to go this evening with the show. Good evening to all of you and welcome to Straight Up. My name is Mark Benchap. Uh, I've asked Dr. David Hines to join me this evening so that we can discuss situations out there in Guyana. Lots and lots of things are happening and the people just want to cover the things up. Uh, and I want to start out by saying good evening to my friend, um, Dr. Richard Van Wyss Charles. Good evening to Dr. Richard Van Wyss Charles. I'm not sure if he's watching this program or he's still at the uh, energy, energy conference or so-called energy expo. It should be dubbed uh, Racism or Division Expo because that's what it's about. There's nothing really there for the small man. The people in Buxton, the people in Linden, the people in Plaisance, in Bartica, in Letem, in, in Madia, Madia, sorry. I was almost going to say Maida because uh, how many of you know that there's a village on the quarantine with that name? Maida. There's Maida and there's Madia, right? <laughs> Uh, there's Maida and there's Madia. Maida is on the quarantine. The village right after farm. There's Bushlat. Well, there's Kildonan. There's Bushlat. There's farm. There's Maida. And after Maida, there's Kilmanak. And after Kilmanak, there's Philippi. After Philippi, there's Cromarty. After Cromarty, there's Wellington Park. After Wellington Park, there's Tarlergy. After Tarlogy, there's 35. Enough of that. Just giving you guys a little rundown on the quarantine so that you can get a little history there. Caroline Hinson is saying, I do. Somebody else is saying, I know Maida. And that person, Cyclin Earl, has actually spelled Maida, Maida, Maida correctly. All right. So um, let's begin with this show. What can we begin with? What exactly can we begin with? I've already said goodnight to... Uh, my friend, um, I've said good night to him, uh, Dr. Richard Van Miss Charles. Uh, look at this. This is New Source Guyana. New Source Guyana, Gordon Mosley, New Source Guyana. And this is what New Source is saying. Guyanese businessman and owner and publisher of Kaichur News, Glenn Lal, who has been calling for renegotiation of the oil contract. Renegotiation of the oil contract contract my good friend and brother in the struggle who is not afraid to be there on the ground to, to to protest and stand up for people's rights he has been doing that maybe about 40 50 years before i was born but good evening dr heinz how are you sir uh, good evening brother mark <laughs> i just not thought so... i get your i just thought i get your attention with that 40 50 years before i was that's born. what i'm trying to tell you not so long <laughs> Not for, it's actually, a bit, but not for it, it is actually called an attention getter in any ah. sort of How did I get to your attention? How have you been, sir? Oh, well, it's been a long day, you know, Mark. I started early this morning on um, more, what uh, more, Buxtonian morning time. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and then I had Politics 101 um, later on in the afternoon. And I, I, I think this is my... A, a colleague of mine say, when you're a professor, you work in shifts. And uh, so she would say, when you come to work, that is first shift. And when you go home and you do public scholarship, that's second shift. And then you have to go and do your research, that is third shift. So I am into my third shift now. I still have one more shift to go. But I'm not complaining. One more shift in here. I, I just want to say, Dr. David Hines, I know you've had a very busy day, and thank you so much. The minute I ask you, you're always ready to go, and that's what I respect with people in the struggle, because there's no time to sleep. 
There's no time to say, man, I can't make it now. Why you didn't remind? Why you didn't ask me since yesterday? Give me a little time. I'm sure under your desk you have about 12 shirts. You just grab any one of them. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have my um my wardrobe person. I'm not a I've never been a fashion person, but I I, I do have um some people who run the fashion side of things. Things um, seems to be things, things seem to be looking a little good for 2020. Nice shirt, by the way. <laughs> you know, the little fret, you know. <laughs> As they I'm, say, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check out behind the scene what's going on with you, Dr. Hines, but you're looking sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well like... it's it's tax season, you know. You get back a little something from it. That's why early. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for what you do on politics one on one and even on Cam's TV for you to get up early because you're like Three hours or four hours behind Guyana time, right? Yeah, three hours, three hours. And, so, and you get up very early to ensure that you talk to the people. You had right. a powerful program this morning, Dr. Hines on Camps TV. Uh, but, very yes, I, I, I kind of gather that from the um, responses that we've been getting. You know, I, I, I told a friend who told me good sermon this morning, and I said, well, you know, um, he's a preacher. So I said, you know how this preaching thing goes. When the spirit moves in you, um, you just got you just go where the spirit could spirit leads you. And that happens and it's, some, it's, someday. Especially, especially when there's a little bit of drumming too, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yes. Dr. Hines, let's get straight down to business. Uh this protest that's happening out there. I know if you were in Guyana or we were in Guyana, we would have been out there by all means necessary protesting. Why do you suppose that such a small number of people actually took the time out to go out? It's, it's very, very small. What is your take on this um, small amount of folks who are out there? Well, Mark, you know, we have to be frank with ourselves. And I know <clears throat> I struggle sometimes with some of our supporters who are not comfortable with self-criticism. You know, we are good at criticizing other people criticizing the PPP, criticizing whoever else. But we're not so good at criticizing ourselves. And, you know, uh, I'm an optimistic person. Uh, b b you, you know, Mark, that when you're in struggle, you have to be optimistic. But we also have to be frank with ourselves. We are in trouble. We are in trouble as a political opposition. We are in trouble as a Black people. We are in trouble as Guyanese. And so when you put all of that together, it's reflected in the small numbers. Though I don't think those numbers reflect the feelings of the people. Because if you move around Guyana and you talk to people, people are angry, they're disappointed. They, 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 they want something to happen. But when you look at a protest organized a protest like that, you don't see that feeling reflect there. And uh, as I said, we're in trouble. We're in trouble because you see, as you know, Mark, protest doesn't happen in a vacuum. It doesn't. It takes leadership and it takes ideas. And often we neglect those two things at our peril. We have a crisis of leadership and we have a crisis of ideas in our community. And we have to, we have to admit that. Often you measure how effective you are, not only by what you think of yourself, but what those to whom your protest is directed, think about you. The fact that the PPP spends so much time on Rick for Burke and yourself and Rick and 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 um, Shara, Shara Duncan and, and 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 others like myself and Kedaki and so on must say something to you that they think that any potential any potential trouble for them comes from our direction. Therefore, it is not just a commentary on us, 
but it's also a commentary on those who hold the levers of power. I suppose as a political scientist, I can say all organizations, all struggles have their downside. But Chinese people don't want to hear that. Black people don't want to hear that. Poor people don't want to hear that. They look around them and they don't feel comfortable. You see, when you, you know that, Mark, when you get up, you know the days when things have gone really bad, you would wake up in the morning, you would call me, when I'm in the country, you would call Lincoln, you know, you would call Freddie, you would call some of the others, and you would say, where are we going today? And we would go there, and we would do it ourselves because we felt we had to do it, because the society, the support base had gone flat, like they are now. And so we felt that we had to keep the pot boiling. And God bless um, Glenlal for keeping the, the pot boiling. But we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. We are in trouble. And the quicker we sort that trouble out, the better. And our supporters have to help us. They have to give us space to be able to point out the source of the trouble and don't get vexed. Earlier on my program tonight, Akumo Ogunse was seeking to point out some sources of our trouble and people get vexed with him. And they don't realize how that thing humbug our struggle. You know, we have a new leader of the major party and he's not getting any headway. And you know, we can blame this individual and that individual and so on and so forth. But it's a larger problem. It's a problem of political culture that says, I am going to stop this newly elected leader in his track. Not realizing that there are thousands of black faces, that if that political leader you are stopping in his track is announced as a parliamentarian tomorrow, it puts a smile on a thousand. 2,000, 200,000 faces. A smile can make a difference because we are so beaten down in Guyana, black people, that we can't have a smile. And if tomorrow Aubrey Norton were to be um, uh, nominated and put in parliament, it will put a smile on 200,000 faces. And from those smiling faces, you can get another 500, another 1,000 people to join, join them. That's how struggle operates. But some people feel that we have to stop our brain tracks. And that is okay. That's your party's business. That's your business. But you have to think about when you do that, what it does to your support. It wipes the smile from their faces. And therefore, the pool from which you recruit people to go out and protest from that shrinks. Human beings re re react to stimulus or stimuli. We are not robots. Something has to pull us or push us. And I'm afraid that the political leaders that our people have invested in are not giving them the stimulus they need to go. You know, uh, well said, Dr. David Hines, if you're now joining us. Uh, Dr. Hines is my guest this evening. We're talking about the situation there in Guyana. I agree with a lot that you have said, uh, but you also know that uh, supporters of the PNC uh, seem to have a short fuse. And I, I say this not to be disrespectful to them. Uh, we saw what happened with Desmond Hoyt. Uh, we saw how quickly they condemned it and ready to take Desmond Hoyt to the slaughterhouse. Uh, we saw what happened with Robert Corbyn as leader of the party he was uh, almost quickly taken to the slaughterhouse. Uh, we saw what happened with uh, former president and leader of the PNC, David Granger. Um, you, you think there is a, a, a bigger problem than what we probably are seeing in the surface, on the surface right now? Is there a bigger problem that we tend to not be patient with the leaders, especially leaders of the PNC, 
and so forth, and we don't give them any any breathing space? Yes, Mark, we have that problem. But you, you have to understand the problem. And I think that you have to be at a certain place to really understand that problem. It's a contradiction of sorts eh, in our community. On the one hand, we revere our leaders, you know, whether it is Burnham or Hoyt or Granger or Norton. I'll tell you, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. I mean, I'm old enough to remember Burnham. But I am telling you, Mark, when I saw Black people react to David Granger, I never saw that with Burnham. You see, Burnham had to share the stage with Guyana, who was revered as a cultural icon, respected. He was almost, uh, you know, a, a, a god, godly figure. Burnham had to share the stage with him. Burnham had to share the stage with a young, radical, bright Walter Rodney. Burnham had to share the stage with other leaders. David Granger didn't have to share the stage with no other black leader. Every one of us pulled back. And he was out there like a rock star. I have never in all my time of black leaders. So the black people respond to a black leader like David Granger. But I think Brother David did not have the capacity to absorb the energies which were driving him. You know, he was not the charismatic leader who got into the spirit of the people. You know? He, he, he just wasn't made of that. He just wasn't, and I'm not blaming him. You know, it's just the way things are. People make you into the rock star, but you have to have the capacity to absorb the energies. I think Brother David did not have that capacity. And so therefore, he took that for granted. And it quickly went away. One former government minister challenged me to write a book on the rise and fall of Granger. And he said, because he can't understand how people could revere a leader like that and then turn against him. Well, why, 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 him. That, why, why that former government minister can't write about that? <laughs> Why, 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 he, why he wants you to write about that when he was in the thick of things in the corridors of power. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah, give, yeah. give that government minister, that former government minister, my regards. I, I will certainly give him. So, Dr. Yeah. David Hines, there some other things that we want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me ask you this here. Um, and the, I suspect that at some point in time, Mr. Aubrey Norton will become the opposition leader. When he becomes the opposition leader, should he publicly say that the installed PPP regime is actually a legitimate government, which is what the PPP wants him to do? Should he do that? And should he immediately meet with Mr. Irfan Ali? Your take, sir. Well, um, he should not. You should not give your opponent what your opponent doesn't give you. You, you, cannot, you cannot say the PPP is installed when everything that you have done since the election and said since the election suggests otherwise. When external forces themselves are saying that they were installed, the form installed was used by the State Department, remember? Of course. And it's the US State Department that had a hand in them in power. Well, one, one, sec one, one second, Dr. Hines. Your volume is coming and going a little bit, please. If you can just, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, so, so the, it's the U.S. who said that they were installed. And it's the U.S. who just said that the elections were disputed. So if Aubrey were to come out and say, I am accepting you as a legitimate government, he will be going against every thing that we know that happened for this that election. So he just cannot say that, right? Now, is that a criteria, a criterion for 
him to meet with Arfan Ali? No, it's not. There's nowhere in the Constitution that says that. And as far as I'm concerned, Arfan Ali needs Aubrey more than Aubrey needs Arfan, right? Because Arfan Ali is leading a government that does not enjoy legitimacy. And he has to depend on Aubrey to give him legitimacy. Aubrey doesn't need Orphan to give him legitimacy. Aubrey legitimacy flow from the people who inspired his election. And he, Aubrey, ought to pay attention to those people. And part of the mistake, as I was saying, that Brother David made is that he did not understand the depth of the feelings of people towards him. And Aubrey ought to be very careful about his priorities. Do not ignore your base. Do not, you, Burnham could have gotten away with it. Hoyt could have gotten away with it. Granger did not get away with it. And Aubrey will not get away with it. You cannot ignore your base. There is a way in which black people are worked up. There's a way in which they view Guyana and view the world. There is a way in which they, thanks to people like yourself and myself, you know, we strengthen them. We won't get hands to it, you know what I mean? But we have helped to strengthen our people, to give them focus, right? And I agree with Ravi Dev that Mark Benchup and David Hines and so on are the out, what they call us outliers. Who are, who are pushing the base? I have no shame to say yes. If that means pushing our people in the right direction, I am guilty. And so Aubrey, I think, has to be extremely careful that as he navigates the other forces, oil people, as he navigates the middle classes, as he navigates the external forces, because they all, he's no leader. They all are going to try to influence this direction. Aubrey, if you're listening to me, your brother is talking to you. As you navigate the forces, do not ignore the people who push you to power. The people who push you to the helm of the PNC is not the regular PNC brokers. The regular PNC brokers are trying to put obstacles in your way. The people who influence your rise to the leadership of the PNC, and the leadership of black people. Because you're not just leading PNC, you're leading black people. That is a mistake your predecessor made. He thought he was only leading PNC, and APNU, and that he wasn't leading black people. Aubrey, if you forget that, and you ignore the cries and the concerns of your people, you are going to fall faster than Granger. That's my public, my public advice, Aubrey. Because Aubrey, you were pushed to power by a force, a force. You, you, you know, the, the um, um, burning spirit will say, I'm a, yeah, a molecular force. It's a political force that pushed you up. And if they move, from under you, you fall on your behind. Take my advice, my brother. Well, Dr. David Hines, uh, 34 minutes after nine o'clock in beautiful Guyana. Um, but I have my take as well in terms of your constructive criticism uh, towards uh, former President David Arthur Granger. Uh, you know, I think also that uh, um, part of the problem was that a lot of uh, folks that he was surrounded by, some of the ministers themselves, ignored their support base. Uh, lots of people were complaining that these ministers, they haven't seen them in a while, they neglected them and so forth. Some of them I see, former ministers and former officials, are uh, dressed up with a different um, suit these days, uh, parading as though they really love their base. But I don't know that's another issue, another topic for another time when and if Mr. Aubrey Norton <clears throat> with Irfan Ali, under what condition or conditions should Aubrey Norton meet with Irfan Ali? That we are sitting down to talk about how we collectively manage the resource 
of Guyana. There should be no other agenda item. The most urgent agenda before our country, and therefore before the leaders of our country, is this patrimony, this oil well that we have, how do we manage it collectively? The United States, who is not Guyana, they're concerned about their business, but even they say that the two sides have to sit down and manage it collectively. And so my advice to Aubrey, your condition must be, we are sitting down there to talk about how do we manage the oil resources. Look, we have to talk, we have to make a differentiation here, Mark, between office and power. You can fight an election in a majoritarian system and you win office. The PPP has won office. The, P, the, the coalition was cheated out of office, but they have almost 50% of the vote. They're not in office, but because they represent half of the population, it means that they have to have power. So you can be out of office, but still be in power. And so what Aubrey Norton has to say to Orphan Ali to discuss power. You are in office because you are installed and all of that thing and so on. But I got 200 and something thousand votes. And if you multiply the votes by people, I get about 400 and something thousand people, Guyanese, behind me. And so, therefore, I my, am coming here to sit down with you to talk power. Power. And power means the ability, the ability to get people to do things that they would not normally. It means, power means the ability to be able to distribute national resources in an equitable way. Power means the ability to be able to say to people, that I am sitting here to guarantee your justice. I am sitting here to guarantee your protection. So therefore, Aubrey North has to go to that table and say, I'm coming here to talk about the protection of my constituency. I'm coming here to talk about the economic well-being of my constituency. I'm coming here to talk about the social well-being of my constituency. Aubrey Norton, you are not there in a divided Guyana to represent those who have not voted for you. Those who have not voted for you are represented by the people who are now in office and by extension in power. Your job now is to go there and give representation, defense and protection to those who have voted for you because they have not. And so therefore, for me, that's the condition for sitting down with well said, Dr. David Hines. Always nice to hear uh, your viewpoint. I noticed some people remember you from back in the days. They're pre behaving as though you're such an old man. One guy, <laughs> Orin Fernandes. Orin Fernandes. <laughs> this guy, sir. Something else. Uh, Dr. David Hines, uh, this whole oil something. Um, I noticed we got some calls coming through. Uh, caller, good evening. You're live. Yes, good evening, Mr. Manchet. Good evening, sir. And listeners and, and your guests, Mr. Hines. I've been listening to your program, Mr. Hines' program, and many others, including Cheryl Duncan, for a long period of time. And uh, it tends to hear the same thing over and over and over. The people not coming out. The people not coming out. Boots on the ground. We're not backing down. As a veteran fighting like Dr. David Hines, He's been around from the days of Dr. Walter Rodney and many others. I know a house never built from the roof. It always built from its foundation. The groaning of brothers and sisters. And if the parliamentarians and many others were interacting with the people as they should, creating the people out of the least of the problem. Because we all know the rules. One being five, five being five, and that five being five, and everybody has some have something to rally around. There's no leaders. Everybody's just talking. And I think, you know, if this continues, we're going to see a development where there's going to be a third force in the country. 
the people start of the PPP and they have no right to represent them or defend them against the PPP. That's all I want to say, Mr. Bencher. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. David Hines, take a bite of that, please. You know that the, the call is very perceptive, very perceptive. You know, I said earlier today, it might have been on 101 or early this morning. Look, all of us need to be called, all of us. The political leaders, the civic leaders, the, 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 the opinion shapers like yourself, all of us need to be called to a table and sit down and work out the strategy. Look, there is a spirit of closing ranks that I detect among our people. A lot of people are saying, David, you know, forget about this PNC and them and just you go do your own thing. And, you know, yeah, one feels good. But I think we are at a particular juncture, Mr. Mark, <laughs> at a particular juncture that we can't risk breaking the solidarity among African guys and by extension among opposition supporters. We cannot break ranks. As much as I hear what people say, and they're frustrated with the principal leaders. And that those of us who are not the big leaders of big organizations and big parties should really just do our thing. I am hesitant to take that road because what it would mean is that we would become a fractured base. When you are fractured, you're easily picked out. You see? And so therefore, if as I recognize what the call is saying, People like myself have to exercise a lot of patience, right? And try to hold this thing together. I'm waiting for a call for us to all sit down and say, we're up against it. How are we going to deal with it? Exactly. What Stick role up your... will you play? What role will yeah, you play? Yeah, if... Divide the work. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Hines. If you can stick a pin, we have another caller on the line. Caller, good evening. You're live on Straight Up. Good evening, Mark and Dr. Hines. Good evening. Good evening. I am disappointed, very much so, with not seeing protesters coming from our, or even being encouraged from the APNU, the AFC, any of their leaders out there, I'm not sure when they would even decide that it's this is the time to get out and fight. I don't even know what more that we could ever say to the people of Guyana and to what is going to come down the pipe if they don't get out and fight. The people outside of Guyana are frustrated because we do as much as we can to help, but there is only so much we can do. They, these people in Guyana, our brothers and sisters, I saw today with Glen Lau, and they're doing the best, and they're the poor Guyanese that's getting out there to do the best they can while the bougies, the, 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 the ones who are well off, they get on the phone and uh, they get on the podcast and they talk about um, complaining about what the PPP are doing. And then I ask them, what are you doing? And it's about time it's boots on the ground. This is ridiculous. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Uh, Dr. David Hines, over to you Good again. Mark. Good Mark, you know, you listen to that call and you hear the pain, you hear anger, you hear everything in that call. Listen, um, let me be frank. I want us to be frank. We are not just up against the PPP. We are up against Exxon. We are up against big oil companies. We are up against the might of the United States. And our political leaders are being, uh, they are being spoken to, you know? Exxon, Exxon is not just talking to the PPP. 
They're talking to leaders on our side. And the, our leaders have to decide whether to take on Exxon. Exxon and others help to put our leaders out of power. <laughs> Sanctions on them. I want us to remember that. <laughs> you see? And so, look, I have to be frank with you all. Other leaders would come here and dance around. Look, I don't think our political leaders are ready to go and pick it exam. I, mean, I, I, was just, I was just about to ask you that, <laughs> that I would be surprised if the leadership of the coalition, be it AFC, uh, APNU, PNC, I'd be surprised if they go out there. Maybe one or two MPs would do it, but they're just not going to do it. And it's God. time that they just come out and say to or their supporters <laughs> know that they're not going to go out there and protest. They may, yes. they may find excuses upon excuses, but they're not going to go out there to protest against Exxon. They're just not going to do it. Mark is the bitter truth. I hate to say it. I'm here to say it. God bless Jared Duncan. He broke ranks and he has gone out there and God bless him. But the leadership of the political parties on the opposition side, they are not going to go there. They Wait a minute. 31 MPs. And only one has gone out there to protest on something that majority or all of their supporters and majority of Guyanese are talking about. Look at the discrimination. Even if they didn't go out there to protest, to make it appear that they're protesting against Exxon. It is the regime and their divisive politics by not inviting a single member of the opposition, the legitimate opposition, not a human, the That's legitimate right. opposition to go out there. What is stopping the leadership? What is stopping Kamraj? One second. Right. What is stopping Kamraj? What is stopping... Aubrey, what is stopping these guys to go out there and protest? And Mark, you've hit the nail on the head. They're what you call levels of politics, right? You're, there's Exxon, there's the Americans, they're the British, they're the CARICOM, they're the, PNC, the PPP regime, there is racism. They're all tied up together. But a, 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 good, a good political mind has to be able to disentangle racism and corruption and authoritarianism from the other. I am here not to confront Exxon. I am here to confront the racism, the authoritarianism, and so on. But that takes some political thinking through. And I don't want to say my brothers and sisters, politicians, are not thinking people. I, I'm not saying that. But, 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 but what I'm saying is that they haven't gotten there yet. They haven't got well, they're getting to get there. The people are being frustrated. The fact that the population is the first, our political leaders are not ready to confront Exxon. They're not ready to confront America. These are the people who put them out of power. They frighten them like hell. And so they are not going to go out there, right? But there are other issues that protect them out there, but they are taking time to, to get there. I, 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 Exxon hasn't called me yet. They're not going to confront Exxon. They're not going to confront the U.S. They're not going to confront China. No. 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 We, we no. got that. But and our, very... our, base, our base has to know that. And they don't, so, they don't be honest with these people. So Exactly. But the base knows that. I think majority of them are beginning to see that. Uh, that when politicians are outside of office campaigning, they're going to confront Exxon. They're going to confront the Americans and say that the ambassador, this and interference and all manner of things. But when they get into office, Dr. Heinz, you've been around for centuries. It's a different story. Very different story. Are we seeing a different story with Mr. Aubrey Norton now? on this particular situation, because he has held a view that was very strong about the U.S. involvement in the elections, strong about ExxonMobil. But some of his supporters, or maybe a lot of his supporters may say, 
He's silent now. Is that an accurate description of Mr. Norton? No, I wouldn't say he's silent now. I would, I would say he is working through that uh, um, jungle that is called Guyanese politics. He has to work it through. And he's an old hand because he has been around a long time. And he knows that once you become leader today, everything changes tomorrow. He, he had to know that. My problem is not, uh, is not working through the complexity. My problem is that you have to tell your people the truth. That's always my problem with politicians. I understand that Aubrey can't operate now like when he was campaigning. When he was campaigning, he was speaking to some black people who were angry, who were disappointed, who were alienated. And there's a certain message you have to give them. Once you become the leader, you are now not talking to them. You're not to the power brokers. But I'm saying, even as you're talking to the power broker, work out a way to balance your allegiance to the power brokers and your allegiance to your base. And I hate to say, the PNC after Burnham has never figured out how to do that. Burnham knew how to do that. How to balance dealing with international forces and the power brokers in the society and dealing with the base. I think the modern PNC leaders have not worked out how to balance the two. The challenge for Aubrey is how to balance the two because the power brokers are going to be on your tail because you could become president tomorrow. But you also have to keep a conversation with your people. And you have to be honest to them. To the point, sometimes you have to apologize to them. We recommended to the APNU before the 2020 election, look, go to them black communities and apologize to black people. Black people are not difficult people. Your mother tell you, buy, you behave bad. Say sorry. Say you're sorry. And if you say you're sorry, you might get two lashes. If you don't say you're sorry, they beat you till thy kingdom come. Black people, Arab people, if you say sorry, they didn't take me advice because they felt that they didn't have to say sorry to those people. They will vote for you anyhow. And I think that's a poor understanding of our people's psyche. And so I'm saying Aubrey has to balance dealing with the stakeholders and the power brokers and the class leader and his allegiance to those people who formed the brigade that pushed him to the leadership. All right, Dr. David Wayne, 53 minutes after nine o'clock, we can go on and on. Uh, but we all get, I'm looking at some of the comments here. Uh, you know, uh, we are trying to be as objective as we can. And uh, this is not anti anyone. We're just being objective because, you know, Dr. Hines, uh, some of our people have this tendency to, when you objectively go after, yeah. they say David Hines is a, against and, and, and Ben Chap is against and all these manner of things. But let me ask you this, Dr. Hines, the leadership of the PNC, they're not out there protesting for what I considered a justified protest against what the PBP regime has done to exclude them from being part of that decision-making table about the uh, oil, I'm sorry, the energy expo. None of them out there AFC leadership, none of them out there. I haven't seen anybody from the WPA. Yes, Kanaki was there. Forget Unless me. you don't think he's WPA. <laughs> Kanaki has always said that he is WPA. Uh, I didn't see Kanaki. So if, if he was there, so that one member for the WPA was out there that we know, and one member for the coalition was out there. Well, two, I heard Gerardo. Uh, Fernandes was all there. So whatever happened to the rest, man, that's a disappointment yeah. to me. It's a disappointment, sir, that the coalition, they cannot have 100 persons out there. We cannot see the other members of parliament. And, and, and here's where, Dr. Divert a bit, I have problem a problem with a lot of those um, opposition members of parliament who do not stand up when the time is right to stand up or something that is justified. 
They wait until after the fact, then they come on social media or they go on programs and they rattle their mouths and they run off and what is this and what is wrong. Take, for example, when uh, that knucklehead mentioned something about dildo in parliament. Sherrod Duncan was the only one who stood his ground. All the others stood there. They might have knocked on the table, but that's it. Behave like a bunch of weaklings. I don't know, Dr. Hines. I, I don't know. But they get back when we talk these things. Um, Brother Mark, when I was a little boy coming out in, in politics, you know, you're little and you, you, um, you, you're feeling your way around. But when you go out there, and you know the PNC and the House of Israel, they're coming for war when the WPO will meet it. But when you go there and you see what- that, that is not true. That is not true. <laughs> Ask Mr. Joe Hamilton, who is now with the PPP. They were, not the PPP. No war. they were not coming to no war with you guys, David. They were just coming to sell planting chips. Are you the guys- planting chips. Right. Come on. But when you went out there and you saw Walter Rodney, Clive Thomas, Rupert Rupner, and I die, Jocelyn Dow, Guyana, all of them out there. It gave you a little by a little girl, it gives you the strength to forward because you watch your leaders, because you're drawing strength from your leaders. These young people who we have in parliament, they're fresh. They don't quite understand the nuances of politics the way old timers. And I don't get the sense that anybody's mentoring them. That is the advantage of throwing a set of people in parliament without any mentorship. And so, therefore, this man takes his eyes and pass them. And they don't know what to do because there's no leadership in that house. They're a young people. And so, Sherrod Duncan, I instinct, because it's something going to take over now. The others didn't have the instinct. They need mentorship. I think they're good young people, but they don't have the mentorship. Mark, you know that. Do not underestimate the importance of when you look around and you see your leaders there. Your head tears quicker. When they look around and they see young green horns like themselves, you are not moved to take instinctive action. So it must we be them. We have to understand that we have given them basket to fetch water. And it's not fair to them, but they have to understand themselves. That is not fair to them. Well, they well, should well, cry out well, for mentorship. Back, back in the days you guys were young, you guys were vibrant. They had lots of young people under the Barnum administration who were very aggressive with their politics. Yes. Yes, you are proactive. And these young politicians need to be proactive. They don't need to sit and wait for orders to pass. They need to be proactive, stand up and defend what is right. It's something as John, uh, John Lewis, the late congressman said, good trouble. These folks yeah. don't know how to create good trouble. They know how to come and talk on social media offer those song bites and, and, and think that that is all about politics. And then they talk about, oh, they have a second job or they have a third job. Who cares about your second job or third job? You're there as a legislator to go out and represent the people who put you there. You're being paid to represent the people. Oh, stand up and represent the people for once. And I think therein lies the problem. Majority of them don't know that they have been elected. They think that they're doing someone a favor by going into the communities, talking about what is happening there. You have mentioned earlier, Dr. Hines, about part of the problem of the David Granger's administration. The problem was bigger. It was bigger than just a David Granger because yes, a lot of them got into office, they became complacent, they forgot their constituency. They didn't give a damn about their people until maybe it was too late, way too late. Yeah, fifty thousand yeah. jobs. But go ahead. You're about to say something. Mark, you then... know, you made you made that point. The comment that they made that they have a job, and I'm give you an an adult, an anecdote. Um, those from Boxer remember my George, um, who was a, a political activist like myself. He he's retired now. Um, but 
It was a school teacher. And we used to be amazed. George would wake up in on his school clothes, his cherry day clean out, and then he got to work at 10 o'clock. And we read the WBA and said, George, why you don't get knocked off yet? Because this wasn't yet. And George would look at us as if we are crazy. Because as far as he's concerned, his political work is more important than the work. He said that to say that's a poor excuse. If you are committed to something, you will find a way to do your second and third job and also do your first job. But it is clear if those who have made that excuse, then a parliamentarian is not their first job. And so one asks the question, how do you then justify being a parliamentarian? If you are saying that service to the people is not your first job. I, 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 I'm amazed. I, I, I don't know. I think um, I see some people are just stuck on this blame game with Granger. We've long gone past David Granger. We've long gone past David Granger. You just don't blame David Granger. In law, there's something that's called contributory negligence. And, and in politics, there's something called political culture that goes beyond the leader. I mean, they got people who know who are behaving just like Granger while, they create, while they're criticizing Granger. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's beyond Granger, you're right. It's a political culture that we have to deal with. We have to deal with the political culture. Political leadership is not an entitlement. Political leadership is not a gift. Political leadership is something that you earn and you earn it by working. You do not call yourself a political leader. People have to Precisely. call you Precisely. Precisely. And you have to have good reasons for doing that as well. You know, you just don't pick up everybody and say he is a leader, she's a leader or whatever. Ben Chap is a political leader. David Hines is a... You have to earn your stripes. And back in the days, as you know, political leaders earned their stripes. Of course. Of course, you didn't go into the PNC today and tomorrow you got into parliament. You had to serve your time. You had to come up in the YSM, and you had to go through, and you had to go to um, Coffee Ideological Institute, and you had to go through all of those things. You had to go and sell your new nation. You had to go on the fan outs, and all of those things. You have to be properly trained, and back right. then, based on what I heard about oh, the YSM yeah. and young people, young people were trained. Yeah. I don't know what has happened to the YSM. I don't know. I just don't know, Dr. Hines. Let's touch before we go. Air Finale promised 50,000 jobs, free education at the university level, all these manner of things, broken promises. Are you seeing any jobs? 50,000 no. jobs? No, and I'd be glad if there are jobs. My God knows that our people, our poor people need jobs. They need paying jobs. And if the government, whether I like that government or not, once the government provided jobs, I have no problem with that. I am not afraid of the PPP giving real jobs with well being well paid to our people. I don't have no problem with that. God bless me with a little tap sign. I can explain that. I, I'm not afraid that the PPP going to take credit for it. When they give you the jobs, I will find a way for we to take credit for it. So I, I want the jobs. But the people never intended to create the jobs in the first place. But you know, you are correct. And maybe the jobs that Irfan Ali is talking about, let's take a quick break whilst we address this. Uh, Fernandes, he's saying time for a third force with real fighters. One second, Doc. Let's show them the kind of jobs that Irfan Ali is talking about that started on the the PPPC regime that never cared about Guyana for 20 something years. Maybe this is the job. Dark food. Dark food business. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Dark food business. Now, nothing is wrong with that, but Air Finale 
has not created a single job. The same way Donald Ramatar in 2011 lied to the people of Linden when he promised them 3,000 jobs. Instead, Dr. Hines, he gave them three caskets. Yeah. Before we go, yeah. this person is saying, time for a third force with real fighters. Is that even relevant right now for any form of discussion? A third well, force. I understand why people are calling for a third force, but I, if there is a third force, it has to be a force within the larger opposition camp. I am not for breaking ranks at this time. So if people think that there is a need for a third force, I have no problem with that, but not a third force that will be in conflict with the rest of the opposition. But, but, but people can say, Dr. Heinz, that the WPA broke ranks by leaving the coalition. That's a sign but, of breaking ranks. Yeah, we leave the coalition, but we didn't leave the opposition struggle. Two different things. The coalition is not the struggle, as you are you quite rightly pointed out. Right? Right? We are in the struggle. I am here in the flesh, struggling as Very part nice. of the opposition. Mm -hmm. So WPA then leave the backgrounds. We got out of the shenanigans. Thank God. Because we might have been in parliament now saying that we got three jobs and four jobs. Right? So we out of that. But we are part of the struggle for freedom. I got you. So at this point in time, you know, because I've been seeing quite a few people talking about a third force, a third force, a third force, a third force, reminiscent of what happened uh, just prior to 2006 elections uh, with the talk of a third force and emerged a third force, AFC. But that third, force, that third force had to come back in and join the larger force. You see? So look, I am not... Uh, in agreement with a third force that goes outside of the fold, fight against the fold, and then come back in late. If we are going to have our disagreements, let us have our disagreements within the force. So there can be a first force, a second force, and a third force, all within the larger opposition force. All right, it's something that I don't want to entertain, but I, I am seeing a lot of people are talking about the third force. It might be a little bit too early for that. Uh, but look, quickly, look, look go ahead, a, young lady, a young lady said, Mr. Hines, respectfully, WPA is dead like a doornail. Then David Hines is dead like a doornail. What am I doing here? That is the kind of political education we have to give our people. Because when you do that, you are disrespecting people like myself. I am not dead. I am here in the flesh. It in the fight. I don't say WPA, 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 but I am representing WPA. And WPA represents a tendency in our community. But you so quick like to say what is dead, what is alive. What we can't talk about what is alive. We talk about what is dead. Like a friend, you know, we have a friend who writes every day. <laughs> this is dead, that is dead, that is dead, this is dead. My sister, you are more intelligent than that. Please stop it. Please stop it. Right? Lift all of us up. I got you. But I know some things don't die. Take a look at this. Take a look at this bridge. This is a bridge at Alnis Village. For 23 plus years, the PPP never took care of this bridge. This is a bridge that we walked on, J.R. Crawford, all of us, we jumped in the trench. We, 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 did, uh, we, we, we were practicing to swim to go to the Olympics for hours. The bridge is still there. It isn't dead. It isn't dead. It is still there. The strong WPA that was there that confronted Bornham, it's not dead. There's still a few of them sprinkling around. No, that WPA is dead. Oh. Well, maybe that's what she's talking I about. I must move on. Mm -hmm. The WPA, unlike the PNC or the PPP, the PPP of Dagon is dead. The PNC of Burnham is dead. That doesn't mean the PNC is dead. Right? Time moves on. 
you know, Rodney did his thing. God bless him. Barnum did his thing. Barnum did his thing. That he did his the thing. The world is left to us to carry on. Degard did his thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? All this change. Things don't die. Things go through changes. Sometimes you don't recognize them when they change. The PPP may not recognize the PPP today. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of people who, who don't, uh, they, they don't know the sacrifices people have made so oh, that we yeah. are where we are today. They just don't, they take a lot for granted and they insult people and so forth. I remember those days, Dr. David Hines, when people were you know, afraid. You know, you know, you know. People were afraid to speak out when just a few of us were out there. I recall just after the elections also when uh, big, strong dictatorship, uh, dictatorial um, guy that headed the US State Department, Mike Pompeo, was threatening people left, right, and center. Right here on this show, straight up. Yes, I could sir. get a lot of those people in the coalition to come and talk. You remember? You remember? Almost none of them wanted to talk. And when I call you, you're like, Mark, get some other guests. I'm like, they don't want to talk. They're afraid <laughs> to speak. Uh, yeah, but yet today, yeah. some of those same people and their supporters want to insult people. Yeah, your, yeah, your, yeah. Your, close, your closing remarks, Dr. Hines, please. Mark, look, you know, I mean, we did not shape the history over the last 18 months. It was shaped by forces external to us. But we have to live with it. And we have to change it. Not going to change it by doing things the old way over and over again. We've got to change our attitude. We've got to change our attitudes. We've got to begin to come up with new ways and new ideas to push ourselves from day to day. We are not up against the party, you know. If it were just the PPP we were up against, life would be easy. We are up against a tremendous force in the world. Thanks to that thing, oil, Guyana is now a different place. And it challenges our imagination. It challenges our patience. It challenges our ability to absorb blows. And it challenges our ability to keep fighting. We've got to keep fighting. I heard that thing, and I always laugh. I always laugh when I saw that thing, pressure boss pipe. I think that so aptly describes where we are. Yeah? Pressure does boss pipe in terms of making people lose faith. But pressure also boss pipe when people push back against oppressors. Eventually, we will prevail. But we have to learn to fight. We have to learn to fight. There are no quick fixes in this Guyana situation. Perhaps we have led you all to believe that. That some or the other we will remove the PPP tomorrow. It is not going to happen. What we are fighting is not to remove a party. What we are fighting is to remove a devilish force that has descended on Diana. And when we remove the devil, we make more space for heaven. That is our task. And we cannot do it with small talk. I keep saying to our Guyanese people here, stop your small talk. Because the other side is laughing us. Every time we try to divide ourselves, they're laughing us. Right? We have to find a way to link our hands and our hearts and stand firm and say, we may be done today, but we are not out for the count. We are going to face tomorrow with all the strength that we have brought with us from the middle passage onwards. Well said, Dr. David uh, Hines. 30 seconds uh, before we go. I just want to remind people, and this aptly uh, describes uh, the PPP, the installed PPP regime, the illegitimate regime of Guyana, the corrupt and racist regime headed by Irfan Ali. 
Uh, that's a fact. These are the same people who were jumping on the mountaintop and calling on the AP and UAFC coalition to produce their SOPs. Almost two years now, the SOPs are in the hands of the PPP regime. They stop talking about the SOPs now because there is no evidence to prove to their supporters that the coalition rigged the elections. The PPP is the one, they are the ones who are stopping the elections petition petitions from being heard. We all know why, because there is no evidence to prove. And like you've said in the beginning, and you've argued on your program, Politics 101 and on CAMS TV, that US aid, and, and, and it's out there, US aid has actually described the PPP regime as an installed. Installed regime. Installed regime. Coming out of a disputed election, incapable of governing the oil well by themselves. And they're saying our leaders must sit at the table to govern that oil well. Please, my people, give our people the strength they need to represent us. Don't weaken us. Strengthen us. Strengthen us. Well said. Don't weaken. Strengthen. And this is a message to Jack Deere, Irfan Ali, and all of those people they invited to prop up their racist and corrupt regime. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> pressure, 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 boss pipe. Pressure. Pressure, <laughs> pressure. <laughs> Bus pipe. Doctor, you can't stop the folk. <laughs> yeah, one one of the one of the things that uh, I will do when we meet and probably have a nice Banks beer, or maybe a Mabi, I know how to get you to 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 to, to talk for one hour and to just get to you. I'm going to say, Doctor Hines, the WPA got a nail to his coffin. It's dead. And man, I'm going to see your reaction. You probably may change say, the box. <laughs> I know. I'm going to say, Mark, we need no. to recruit you to come to the WPA to help us remove the nails from the coffin. And I'm sure that you will come on board. You're a very sympathetic guy. And right now, you don't have a home. So we will help. <laughs> Mr. <Miss> Mark? <laughs> Pepper. Uh, uh, what, what is it? Pressure, pressure by pressure. Pressure, boss, by <laughs> speaking of pressure. Let's, let's remind Mr. Sue, speaking of pressure. Mr. Mark, I believe every word of what Mr. Sue is saying. I am also afraid of a Mr. Sue. Mr. Sue, if you are listening, I don't want anybody to harm you. This is a serious thing. Corruption is big. And we Chinese have to stop that. Been bullied by Jack Dale and other government official to pay bribe. It's big all over Guyana. A Chinese to pay by bribe. Mr. Chu, I hope you to stay strong. Do not. We respect and salute you for your bravery, for coming up and speak against corruption in Guyana. Thank you, Mr. Shu. We appreciate you, Mr. Mark. Mark, I believe every word of Shu said. I am very worried about Shu. Shu, if you are listening to me, I do not want anyone to harm you. 圭亚那政府腐败很严重，这个是很严重的事情。我们中国人必须停止被那些政府用武力行贿。苏先生，我希望你能继续你的发表，也希望你在新的一年万事如意。Maybe, maybe, right? Maybe the Chinese company that did not get the the agreement that they wanted here 
maybe they're the ones who told you. Or it could be just a, a, a fictitious thing. Okay, well, let's talk about specific individuals. What is your relationship with Mr. Sujuro? So, oh, so, my relationship. Pressure, 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 boss pipe. Pressure, boss pipe, indeed. Dr. David Hines, I know you have another engagement. I know. You can go, pressure, boss pipe. Pressure, pressure. Uh, someone is asking here what happened to Mr. Thomas Anderson. Uh, my apologies. I should have announced earlier that uh, Mr. Thomas Anderson will be on this Friday. Not tonight. Sorry about that. Thomas Anderson will be on Friday this Friday. All right, Dr. David Hines, thank you so much for your time as always. Uh, and thank um, you, my brother, for having me on. I got to go now and cook dinner and then prepare for my last shift for the night. Good night. All right. And, and, and remember, uh, Buxtonian, talk the things in the morning. In the morning. Kadaki. Kadaki, yes. join us. Uh, and then right. we have our program also that's called the mid-morning program from 9. Kadaki is from 7 to 9. Right, right, right. And tomorrow night I'm having the Apostle on. I, 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 I noticed the other night he deputized for you. Um, yes. Yes, so um, he's going to make his first appearance um, uh, tomorrow night on on Politics 101. So. That's Apostle London, right? Oh, yes, Apostle London. All right. Thank you. Know. We'll also have it uh, by this page. Thank you so right. much. Um, thank you so much, Dr. David. Thank I you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it, sir. Yeah. All right, Dr. David Hines here for you guys. Uh, my name is Mark Benshop. I'll be back tomorrow, same place, same time. God bless you all. And don't be bullied by those people. If you have to go out tomorrow and protest, just go out and protest. Don't watch who is not going. Just go. Pick up a placard and go because it is your future. Barrett Jagdeo is not concerned about your future. Air Finale is not concerned about your future or one Guyana or whatever. It's all about a hustle, a big, big hustle. That's what they are, political hustlers. All right. So the mid-morning show is on uh, starting from 9 o'clock tomorrow, Guyana time, with Gabby and DJ Andre. Don't miss it at all. God bless you. And God bless that beautiful country. Uh, let's send a message, as always, to Barra Jack Dale and their finale, and all the other individuals, questionable ones, political flatfoot hustlers. This message is for them. What is the difference between the ordinary thief and a political thief? Number one, the ordinary thief steals your money, your bag, your watch, and your jewelry, isn't it? But the political thief steals your future, your career, your education, your health, and your business. Number two, the hilarious part is that the ordinary thief will choose whom to rob. But you are the one who choose the political thief to rob you. Because we choose them. We vote them. We blindly say we are not blind. Who is deceiving who? The ridiculous part of the whole issue is that we will fight to defend and protect our belongings from the ordinary thief. Is it not? But we fight each other to defend and protect the political team. Is that not what we do? Thugs will be fighting themselves to protect those that are stealing our career, stealing our joy, stealing our health, stealing our success. What a shame. What a travesty. It calls for us to think and think deep. The stage we are in as a country it's not a stage where you become an onlooker. You have become an onlooker for too long. You must get ready. Hello, this is attorney Shellen Washington, owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, 
The phone number to call us is 718-877-3100.